Hi, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and welcome to another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to take a look at the G90. Um, just a glimpse by using this with the oscilloscope and the spectrum analyzer to see what it really puts out. Uh, we're going to do this in CW mode, and I just want to say one thing. I tried doing this in USB. If you do this in USB mode and you use a key, like this key, which happens to be the station reference key, um, it will transmit, but not write. So make sure you're in CW mode. It seems to put out a reasonably well-behaved CW signal. Um, so I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to look at the quality of the CW and note that there is a little weirdness at the beginning of each uh, character and then we're going to look at the actual power out because the power on the G90 can be switched from 1 watt to 20 watts uh, in 1 watt steps so we we'll want to do just a little bit of measurement and see how close that is to reality so let me show you the test setup Here's the G90 here. It's being powered by this bio-NO lithium-ion battery. Okay, and then I have the output of that going over to where it is tapped into the scope. Uh, this is the oscilloscope, and that's a high impedance tap, so it's not in any kind of a load. The uh, Regal scope will take up to 300 volts, and we're not getting anywhere near that. So when I've got it set up to measure things up here, okay, so if I tap on it, you can see uh, the measurement of it. And uh, then I have up above it here the spectrum scope set up uh, from 7 to 7.1 uh, megahertz. And you just see the nice clean signal uh, there that we get. And uh, the cable comes out of over by the scope and runs into this little signal sampler right here and then runs straight on through to a dummy load okay so dummy load for everything and then uh, the it's output of the signal sampler goes over here to the uh, spectrum scope which uh, cannot uh, withstand near as much input energy as uh, the oscilloscope. The oscilloscope has a very high input impedance and so it is uh, uh, just it does not dissipate any power or so but this spectrum scope has a 50 ohm impedance down here and so it will dissipate the full 20 watts in there if I were to give it to it. Okay so let's take a look at what I'm doing here. I'm trying to look at the keying waveform I've got full 20 watts right here. This is the max power. Let me get that a little steadier. Okay, so it's making nice square pulses. That's at full power. Now, if we go to full power, we see that we have a VRMS of 34 or 33 volts okay so let's go to the calculator here now the formula is e squared over r because those are the variables we know so we'll clear the calculator we'll put in that uh, what was it 30 34 volts rms three four square it okay and then divide it by 50 which is the impedance in the system and we get 23.12 uh, watts out. Now that's the peak the peak 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 and uh, you'll notice that uh, on every pulse there's a little jagged thing at the bottom it starts a little high then goes down now let's trim this down here. It's set right now for uh, 20 watts. So we'll turn that down to 10 and see what we get over here. We're going to have to 
move this down okay now notice again we have that uh, transient right at the beginning okay I'm getting 25.1 volts peak to peak so if we go again with our calculator 25 squared divided by 50 we get 12.5 watts okay so let's go down to 5 watts here Five watts okay now let's again see that that little trigger reference there I'm seeing about 11 volts peak to peak so 11 squared divided by 50 is 2.42 watts. Okay, so the bottom line is that the watt meter on this thing is not terribly linear, but it does vary the power quite a bit, and uh, it'll give you a nice signal for CW uh, on on the band. We're on the 7 megahertz right now. By the way, I, I went up here and I looked that's just the signal in the band right on frequency. Now we can change the stop frequency here. Let's change the stop frequency to 25 megahertz. Okay, so we've got a much bigger here and what we're looking for is harmonics. And I'm not seeing any. Here we go. We're looking at the 7300. That first pulse is rounded quite a bit. There's no particular evidence of that initial spike now by the way this is just the output from the dummy load so it's not going very far but it's close enough to be pretty loud so there we have it a kind of a quick and dirty look at the G90 and how it operates on CW uh, two things we learned. One, the variable power output does work. Two, it's not terribly accurate, but it's close enough. Um, and number three, there's a weird click on the leading edge that shows up in the scope, but doesn't show up over on the 7300, so I wouldn't worry terribly about it. You should notice that the first dip is a little bit slow to rise, uh, but otherwise uh, everything seems to work fine. So, we've tested the G90 uh, to see how well its CW transmit works, and in future videos we'll take another look at the G90. So, if you would, uh, take a peek at uh, dcastler.com slash support for different ways that you can help fund this channel, and please add your comments and your questions, and don't forget the Thursday evening live stream, and until we next meet, 73.